Thunderbolt docks are the best way to turn your laptop into a portable desktop setup. And Thunderbolt docks provide so many ports that you can use between audio, network, USB, and other Thunderbolt ports. The Sonnet Echo 20 Super Dock is Sonnet's largest and most powerful dock they've ever come out with. It builds upon the Echo 11 dock and adds even more ports and features, including an NVMe SSD slot on the bottom and built-in RCA output jacks to allow your computer to be plugged into professional audio equipment like powered monitors or an audio mixer. Sonnet did send me this dock for purposes of making this video, but all the thoughts in this video are my own, and I'm gonna share all my own opinions in this video. They haven't seen it, and they don't get to approve it before I publish it on YouTube. The Echo 20 is designed for someone who wants a dock that can do everything for their MacBook, Mac Studio, or Mac Mini, all by using just one Thunderbolt 4 port. In the box, we find the Echo 20 Super Dock, a really large power adapter that helps power both the dock and your laptop, a Thunderbolt 4 cable, and a locking Thunderbolt 4 connector that keeps the cable from being able to be pulled from the back of the dock. On the back of the dock, we find a power connector, an HDMI 2.1 port that supports up to 8K resolution at 60 Hz, a Thunderbolt 4 connector for your computer that supports 100 watts of power, two Thunderbolt 4 outs, a 2.5 gigabit ethernet jack, four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, two are USB-A and two are USB-C. Also RCA left and right jacks and an eighth inch microphone jack. The front of the dock has a headset jack, four more USB ports, an SD 4.0 slot that supports UHS-2 speeds that are faster than standard SD cards, and underneath the dock there's a slot with a cover that you have to unscrew for the NVMe drive. To install an NVMe drive into the Echo 20, first remove power from the dock, flip the dock over, and unscrew the two Phillips screws covering the slot, and then unscrew the other smaller Phillips screw in the slot. Then take your NVMe SSD and insert it into the connectors at an angle and slot the pins into the connector. Push it down and put the Phillips screw back in to hold it in place. Then you want to put the cover back on and screw it back in. You may have to format the drive in disk utility if it's not recognized by your computer. Sonnet has a list of compatible drives and this dock can support an NVMe with a capacity of up to 8 terabytes but these are still kind of expensive and hard to find at the time of filming this video. Unfortunately, the NVMe slot supports only speeds of up to 800 megabytes per second, and I found this to be the case with my testing. I did check in with Sonnet's customer service, and they said that this was just to protect the total amount of bandwidth that the Thunderbolt 4 port could provide for all the different ports on the dock. 800 megabytes a second is still plenty fast, though, if you're using this as an archive drive or for purposes like Time Machine. It's just not going to be as fast as the maximum speeds that you could get if you were using a Thunderbolt drive. But again, 800 megabytes a second is still pretty fast for most users. I'm just using it as a space to store a copy of video projects that I'm working on and not that I'm currently working off of that drive because it's just not quite as fast as the built-in MacBook Pro drive. I've really been liking the Samsung Evo 970 Plus drive in it. One of the things I really appreciate about this dock is that they give you so much connectivity on both the front and the back of the dock. With some of their other docks, there just weren't very many ports on the front, which I find these to be really handy for plugging in external storage, cameras, and other devices that you use somewhat regularly. And then I use the back of the dock to keep my devices like my audio interfaces and my long-term RAID storage permanently attached. That way it's always ready to go for me. I've been testing a variety of different RAID drives, audio interfaces, keyboards, computers, and I've had no issues at all with this dock working and just being plug and play for all of them. I also really appreciate the UHS-2 card slot because I can use the built-in slot on my MacBook and use that to be able to pull files off of two cards at the same time, which just makes offloading my files a little bit faster. I've also tried it with a bunch of different hard drives plugged into the front and back ports, and I've experienced no slowdowns at all compared to just plugging it straight into my laptop. Now, the thing you do have to be careful about is if you're running three or four different external storage devices and trying to copy files all at the same time, you can definitely run into a bottleneck because this is all going from one Thunderbolt 4 port on your computer. So just keep in mind, if you do add a bunch of different storage devices to the one Thunderbolt dock, you may not get your top speeds of using all the storage. To me, another big standout feature of the dock is the built-in RCA jacks because it gives you a line-out signal that makes it really hard to distort a pair of studio monitors or to distort running it straight in an audio mixer of some sort. In the past, if you wanted to run this with higher end speakers using your Mac computer, you've had to buy a special audio adapter, but it's really nice to have those RCA jacks that are built straight in. 
and I was able to plug an RCA cable directly from this stock into my Atom Audio speakers, and they sound fantastic. There's no distortion, and you can even control the volume just using the native Apple volume up and down buttons on the keyboard. You can also change between all the different audio outputs on the dock just by going to the sound settings on your Mac, and then you can click the RCA jacks, or you can just use the headset out, or you can always use your laptop's built-in speakers just by going to the audio settings on your Mac. So overall, I really like this dock. I love the RCA ports. I love the built-in NVMe slot because I always have extra storage that's just permanently attached to my MacBook. I also really appreciate that Sonnet added four USB ports directly to the front of the dock because it makes it so easy to use external storage or devices that you're not leaving permanently plugged into your computer. And it's amazing that they give you both USB-A and USB-C so you don't have to worry about looking for adapters. Another thing I really appreciate is that every one of the USB outputs has 7.5 watts of power. So the 7.5 watts will come in handy for charging a lot of devices, but it would have been cool if they put one or two higher powered ports in to support things like Apple's MagSafe chargers for their phones. Another cool feature is that they give you a 2.5 gigabit ethernet connection instead of the standard one gigabit connection. Now I get it, there's not a ton of 2.5 gigabit providers out there or even switches and routers yet, but it's nice to have that port there for the future as this becomes more readily available. Let's talk about a couple slight cons or maybe inconveniences depending on your desktop setup. First of all, they did remove the power button from the front of the dock, which I never used the power button on the Echo 11 anyways, but for some people, this will be kind of annoying. Another thing that can be a little annoying, before you disconnect the dock, if you wanna safely eject your NVMe drive, you need to get into Finder and eject it from there, or else you're gonna to have to add some sort of third-party software that automatically ejects all hard drives when you put the computer to sleep. Probably the two biggest drawbacks of the dock are the size of the dock and the size of the power adapter. It is gonna take up a significant amount of space on your desktop, but it's totally worth it for all the ports that you get and for the simplicity of being able to power your computer off the one Thunderbolt 4 port on it. I'm using it primarily with a 14 inch 2021 MacBook Pro and I haven't had any issues with it being able to provide enough power to keep my MacBook running even while working on editing, rendering, and exporting video projects on Final Cut. The other big con with the size of the power brick and the dock is that you're really not gonna wanna travel with this. It's probably gonna live in your battle station setup at your desktop. Another thing that could be seen as a pro or a con is they put the Thunderbolt 4 port on the back of the dock. Now, again, this could be a pro or a con. If you're using multiple laptops with this, you probably won't care because you'll just leave your Thunderbolt cable lying on your desk and you can plug in a new computer whenever you're ready to use it. But if you're gonna use this with a Mac Mini or a Mac Studio, you might have preferred having the Thunderbolt port on the front of the dock and then just buying a second Thunderbolt 4 cable. That way you could just plug one permanently into the back of your Mac Studio or Mac Mini and then have a second one that you use for your laptop. So the port on the back may be a pro for you and may be a con. For me, I don't have a Mac Studio, so it's fine for me. Some of these different features we're discussing though can be seen as pros for some and cons for others. So I recommend just look at all the ports on this dock and decide how it would work for you and your setup. The Sonnet Echo 20 Super Dock retails for $300, which is a lot of money, but for a dock like this, it's actually a great value because other brands like CalDigit offer their TS4 Thunderbolt 4 dock and it actually costs $400. It doesn't have the RCA jacks. It doesn't have the NVMe slot. So with the Echo 20 Super Dock, you just get a lot of features that you don't normally find in Thunderbolt 4 docks, and at a price that seems very fair for all the different things it's able to do. I really appreciate having all the different USB-A and USB-C ports, the RCA ports, the NVMe slot, and all the front jacks as well. It's just a really well thought out dock overall that I really don't have any major complaints with. Sonnet also has the Echo 11 and the Echo 11 HDMI, which these are both two other great docks, but you lose a couple ports to them. You don't have the RCA jacks, you don't get the NVMe slots, and you don't get as many USB ports on the Echo 11. So if you have the extra money to spend and you don't mind the larger size, I would recommend buying the Echo 20 Super Dock over the Echo 11 because it's gonna give you more ports. It has that future-proof 2.5 gigabit ethernet jack, and you get the RCA jacks just in case you ever need those and the NVMe slot, where you can always add a larger NVMe in the future to expand the storage on your computer. So overall, I've really enjoyed this dock. I love using it with all the different capabilities that Sonnet has built in. It's just streamlined my desk setup and workflow even more than their Echo 11 dock. I love having the extra storage built straight in, and the RCA jacks on the back have been a game changer too. If you're interested in buying an Echo 20 Super Dock, 
I have links to purchase it in the description below. And if you have any other questions about this stock, or if you think I missed something, leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Like this video, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming tech reviews.